This program is part of the Cosmic Potato Podcast Network. For more shows like this, visit our website at CosmicPotatoNetwork.com. All right, you primitive screwheads, listen up. I am Iron Man. And welcome to World War G episode 258. I'm Troy. I'm AJ. Okay, so for today in geek history. Look, up in the sky, it's a bird! It's a plane! It's today in geek history! Um, on this day, March 1st, in 1941, Captain America, created by cartoonists Joe Simon and Jack Kirby, is first published by Timely Comics. Um, yeah, Captain America number one, first published today in 1941. That's crazy. I, I can't even imagine how much one of those, like that issue, would have gone, like, would go for nowadays. Yeah, especially with how big Captain America has become. Yeah. Um, Would you say that he is like even above Iron Man at this point as far as popularity goes in the mm, MCU? Mm, I think Iron Man is still at the top. Mm hmm. Um, well, not after, you know, uh, Doolittle. Right. <laughs> <laughs> uh,. Yeah, I think people are still riding the Iron Man wave, but I think as the MCU carries on without him, yeah, I think it'll become less and less popular. I think there there'll be some other character that that shines. Maybe Spider Man. Maybe years down the road, we'll be like, hey, do you remember those Iron Man movies? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. Um, it's funny. Captain America has had an interesting run with Marvel because he used to be like back in the 40s, 50s, 60s. Like he was kind of the face of the company, right? Like if you look back at some old Marvel comics, his his face is in the corner, um, and on a lot of comic books because that was just yeah he was just kind of the face of it. And then after a while, Spider Man kind of took that role. And they've kind of they've kind of since like changed they've changed it a couple of mm-hmm. times. Yeah, and, and Spider Man was the face for like through like the eighties and nineties and stuff and the two thousand, and now it's kind of Iron Man because of the MCU. Now yeah. he's kind of the face of Marvel. It will really be interesting to see who is the next like is the next face of the MCU. And as much as I'd love to say it would come from like great writing and illustrating from comics, I think it's going to have something to do with like, uh, you know, the next phase. Yeah. Who that big, like that big number one is going to be. I think once they start introducing like the X-Men and Fantastic Four and that sort of thing, I think they're going to start to take over. So it's possible that like Wolverine will once again become the face of Marvel comics. I could see that happening. Yeah. Uh, if they did it right, I could, I, my money is leaning a little bit more towards uh fantastic four, fantastic four. Really? Just their logo. Um, I think they'll have kind of an intricate role in, in the upcoming, you know, upcoming like movies. I really want to see, um, the MCU's fantastic four. <laughs> Right. Because I think they will do it justice, and I think they will do it well. Yeah. I like the pile of garbage that we've gotten so far with those characters. Yeah. Speaking of which, 
Chris Evans. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> um, Chris Evans is in talks to do, uh, well, to be part of the Little Shop of Horrors. We've heard rumors that there is going to be another movie made. And wouldn't that be cool if he was actually, like, he was the main dude? In this, yeah, uh, I think he could actually do a really he could do a really good job with it. Um, so he let's see, he's in talks to play oh the evil dentist, correct? That was played by Steve Martin. Mm-hmm. Okay, interesting. Well, okay, misunderstood. I don't know necessarily. I wouldn't say evil. I don't know. I've never seen it. Really? Really? Oh wow. Okay, that's kind of, man. That's like one of those like classic ones that yeah. You know? I know it. I know, there's there's something about it that I just uh, I don't find appealing. Too cheesy, too campy. Maybe that's it. May, I mean, it is a musical, and not that I don't like musicals, but dude, for one per, a person being in the theater, you would think I don't know because they've even adapted it to the theater. I know, and had musicals. They've in adapted it. to a stage play, you know. Yeah. I know. I just I, I don't know, it's, it's just not something I've ever really been interested in watching. Okay. Um, I hope they have more of a darker tone with this one. And did you ever see the movie, um, what was it? The Voice? With Ryan Reynolds and, um, what's her bucket? Ah. Probably not and, because it had Ryan Reynolds in it. Well, no, because it had Anna Kendricks in it as well. <laughs> did it? Yeah. How did I miss that? Right? That's why, that's what I'm saying. That's what, um, where he was able to talk to the animals. And he was like kind of American Psycho esque. Mm. Was it the one where he chopped off their heads and put it in a fr- in their fridge in his fridge? Uh yeah, yeah, more important parts of it. Yeah, yeah, I saw that one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, um, I feel like they could go that direction, like much darker, much like more sinister, but I hope that they like shy away from actually showing the creature or like having the creature on screen. I'd I'd be more interested to see him going out and how he gets people lures people back in there. Mm. You know? That that to me would be more interesting. Hmm. Yeah, I wonder if this remake will be a musical. Can have we seen him sing? Have you seen Chris Evans? I think. I swear we have. Like I, somehow I'm picturing into my mind him singing, and I think he's a decent singer. I can't. I can't remember when or where. Hmm. Well, from one former Avenger to another, Tom Holland confirms. The Back to the Future remake talks have happened. Now, here's the thing. If you haven't seen that deep fake video that came out, um, do yourself a favor and go watch it. It is creepy. Like, it, it's Tom Holland and Robert Downey Jr. as Mock. Uh, Mock? <laughs> That's their celebrity name. Yeah, yeah. Doc and Marty. And it fits really well. Um, like they, they just fit into those roles. Now, I've always been one of those people like, don't Mess remake or touch Back to the Future. Yeah. Because I think those films are almost perfect. But I don't know. Wait, if, almost? Well, they have their, they have their issues. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I mean, number... I really like number two. That's probably my favorite one. Yeah. Don't you dare say anything bad about it. But it's... Yeah. Anyway. Um, so three was the one that, like, eh, I was kind of... It, it was okay. Yeah, three was weird. Like, like three Rift, all of a sudden... The, yeah, future and... All of a sudden we're in Cowboys and it's a Western and it's... Yeah. yeah. But if those two were to play it i don't i don't know half tempted to say go for it yeah like i'm i might be on board with that which is weird because these i mean you know you've got these big indiana jones they shouldn't touch that one you know star wars like kind of like yeah sleeping dogs lie yeah 
Um, and like Back to the Future, I would say that's right up there with some of these mm-hmm. amazing ones. Yeah. That you don't want to see like anything besmirch it, you mm-hmm. know, besmirch these, their good name. Yeah. But if you get a like a cast like that, and I I, I already feel like they have that kind of like rapport and that relationship. They we've, do. We've seen them on screen like act re- like play really well off of each other. Yeah. And I was going to ask you, I'm not sure, maybe you know a little bit more than I do, but um, Michael J. Fox and Christopher Lloyd, did they really have, I mean, they had the chemistry on screen, but did they really have that interaction before making the movies? Hmm. No. Or, th- or they just got super lucky with casting. They got lucky with casting. Yeah. Okay. Where, where these guys, they've already worked, they've already done movies together, you yeah. know? We've already seen them play that basically like mentor, mentee kind of a role. Mm-hmm. So it wouldn't be that much of a stretch. Um, Would you want them to just remake the the trilogy or would you want them to actually add on to it? Or start all over again or how what would you like to see if they were going to do it i'd rather them reboot it instead of doing like a sequel or something like that um that way it's easier to kind of separate the movies in my mind right like this is this is the one this is the other um and because if it were a sequel i would i would think or even like a prequel or something i would think this I don't know. It's just, it's just kind of ruining it. Even if it was good, it'd be like it just it doesn't feel right. It just doesn't fit. Yeah, where like it's pretty easy um, to separate the you know. Speaking of Tom Holland, it's pretty easy to separate the Spider-Man movies. Yeah, right. You got the Tobey Maguire ones. You got the Andrew Garfield, the Tom Holland. Mm-hmm. You know, you can separate them pretty easily. And even though they're telling the same story and they kind of go different directions with it, they they've got their own tone to them. Right. Right. So they could do the exact same thing with this one. Mm-hmm. I, I'd like to see that as well. Um, they've got much better, you know, visual. Like, I hope they don't go too. That's what I loved about um, the original ones is they use some practical effects. They did, yeah. For yeah, for the yeah. most part, you know, you're like they're actually on these trains and they're running around doing all these sorts of crazy things. I'd hate to, even though we have the technology available, I would hate to see them ruin it by doing too much. Yeah, CGI. too much CG. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, yeah. yeah, I agree. Um, I, I mean, I don't know. I think I think at this point it was basically people calling up Tom and being like, "Hey, have you seen that video? What do you think about it? What do you think maybe possibly doing a Back to the Future reboot?" And I bet at the moment that's all the talks that have happened. Right, as far as talks have gone, yeah. yeah. Which, like, a really smart move on his behalf to say, "Oh yeah, I'd be all for that." Right? Of course. But do you think that he kind of like divided the whole Back to the Future audience in half right then and there? Like half saying like, don't mess with this and half saying like, yeah, let's see it. Like, let's see it. Oh, I'm sure. I'm sure. I mean, it's it's the internet commenter culture. I mean, you have to get your voice out there. Right. I say as I'm on a podcast. <laughs> <laughs> uh yeah it's kind of pot calling the kettle black there but a little bit a little bit but no i i, I completely agree with you like you want to get it out there and no you know smart actor or actress is going to turn down a, a like a potential role sure. or a franchise right um and hopefully robert downey jr will start to Pick up the pace from his uh, post Avengers career, right? Because man, Doolittle bombed. It. I don't even think it recouped its money. I don't think it did either. It was sitting at like. I mean, it cost because we talked about it before that it was. It cost about two hundred plus million dollars, mm-hmm. and it, like opening weekend, yeah. It. I think it did like twenty or thirty or something like that. Right. Yeah. Um. He he can be yeah. super picky. I mean, I I I understand that like 
you know, it, it's hit or miss a little bit. And when you switch directors and switch tones of the movie and try to like cut, piece something together, mm-hmm. um, I get that happens with like some films. But dude, I would be so super picky. Like, you don't need the money. You can do right. whatever the heck you want. Right. And from what I've heard, uh, he had a lot of influence on that movie. Oh, geez. Yeah. Like, as far as, like, script and direction and stuff goes. And he had a lot of power with that movie. And I think that was part of the problem. (laughs) Because there was just so many people trying to get their ideas out there. Um, Is that one of those instances where it's, like, know your role? Yeah. All right. Yeah. And I mean, what what director is going to tell Robert Downey Jr. No, oh yeah, I'm not going to do this. Yeah, no, I don't think. I mean, out there, you'd have to be maybe like Spielberg? a Spielberg. Uh, yeah, Spielberg kind of level. Yeah, yeah. Other than that, there, I I can maybe think of like three or four directors that could really like say like oh, I think we're going to go this direction. I mean, like I appreciate your input and feel free to kind of like ad lib or be creative mm-hmm. with like some of the lines, but this is the direction the movie's going and that's kind of, you know, take it or leave it. Yeah. Yeah. But some of these other up and coming directors, they're just like, "Oh yeah, let's I, yeah, yeah I, I'd love your input." Yeah, they're not going to tell him no. <laughs> Um, speaking of films, um, Parasite is being adapted into a graphic novel. Have you had a chance to see this one just yet? No. Um, so the really cool thing about this one, this movie, and about this, I I normally wouldn't be on board with it. I'd much rather see from graphic novel to film adaptation. You know, they've done that with like Sin City, um, V for Vendetta, uh, Watchmen, um, like countless other ones that have like done really, uh, even Road to Perdition, you yeah. know, like have done really well from the page to the big screen. Right. But like this direction, it's just the opposite where this movie has like found some acclaim and won Academy Awards. Um, and, but the neat thing about this is, um, Bong Jung Ho, uh, he, I'm probably butchering that name and I apologize, but, um, he, basically screen like shot for shot he drew like these pictures of the movie what he wanted to see it and then he had like the dialogue underneath it and did shot for shot the entire movie so i think it would be cool because they already said that it's going to feature some of his like drawings Mm -hmm. in this graphic novel um so i feel like it's it's always interesting to me to see like a film makers you know the creative process that goes into creating something where you have this like vision and a lot of the times like they don't know necessarily know how to get from point a to point b but they're like i want to have a scene like this and i want to have a scene like this he knew what he wanted like every step of the way right and this was his like his baby you know and that's why it was so cool to see like you know him win um but yeah no i'll i'll definitely be like looking forward to to seeing this um and if you guys haven't seen this movie uh it's worth a watch it's not Necessary, like it, there is some like violence in it for sure, um, but it's got an interesting message and an interesting story that is really cool. Yeah, I need to see it. I don't think it's in theaters anywhere at the moment, so I'm gonna have to wait. But yeah, I'll see it eventually. Um, Are there any other ones that won like uh, uh, an award? that you've been wanting to see that you haven't seen just yet? Or were at least nominated? Mm, no. I I just had no Jojo interest. Rabbit? No. <laughs> I know everybody was talking about that one, but I'm just like, eh. uh-huh. I think it was only just... Scarlett Johansson that was nominated for with that movie. I think so, too. Well, was, was Taika nominated for director? I think he might have Oh, been. yeah, yeah, you're right. Okay. Yeah. It was up for like two of them. Yeah. Yeah, but that was another one. I was just like, mm, mm. I yeah, I, I just had no interest in in the Oscars or anything this year. So, which is weird because I know that typically you'll see a lot of these movies beforehand, yeah. so that you can actually like vote on it and pick, yeah. you know, what you want. Yep. 
um, like the, it's like the month leading up to it when you already know who the nominees are going to be. That you're just like, all right, well, kind of let's hit some of these other movies mm-hmm. that seem interesting. Not with this year though. No, Is it I just don't because like there wasn't that many out there. That could be. I uh, I don't know. I just I just didn't have much interest in in these films. Like they just didn't they didn't grab my attention. Yeah. So even though you did see a couple of them, I know nineteen seventeen. Yeah. Yeah. You know. Yeah. I saw one or two, but that was pretty much it. Okay. And there were a lot more foreign films as well, which was really cool to see. There were, yeah, yeah, yeah. Which, like, unfortunately, like the closest theater that's showing it is like you know forty miles in the, uh, south of here. We don't have um, we don't have as many. Yeah. So I I went back to episode two fifty one in my notes where I wrote down all my picks for the Academy Awards. Yeah. Speaking of that. So I said, Best Picture, Once Upon a Time in Mexico, got that wrong. Best Director, Todd Phillips. Did I get that right? Who won Best Director? I'm trying to pull that up. Um. Anyway, Best Actor, Joaquin Phoenix. I got that right. Best Actress, Scarlett Johansson. I don't think I got that one right. Which Which category was it that you were looking for? Uh, best director. Let's see, best director. Best director. Oh yeah, no, it was uh Bong Jong. Oh okay, okay. For Parasite. All right, um, best actor. What? Who won best actress? Uh, it was for the performance or Judy. Uh, Renee Zellweger. Oh, Renee Zellweger. Okay, and then uh, supporting actor. Um, best supporting actress was Laura Durham. Yeah, I've got that one wrong. Um, best actor, best picture. All right, that was the Johansson double down. Yeah. Yeah, I failed on that one. Best supporting actor, is that what you were looking for? Yeah. Uh, Brad Pitt, Once oh. Upon a Time. Oh, right, right, and right, right, right. right. Yeah, 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 yeah. And then, uh, I did get animated feature right. Toy Story 4. You, it's always the safe bet, right? Yep. Always, always bet on Pixar. Um, okay. So, The Mandalorian Season 2 will feature, quote, major, major, epic, epic lightsaber action. Major, major, epic, epic? Mm-hmm. Okay. Um... So we know at the uh, spoilers, you haven't seen it. At the very end of the Mandalorian, um, you see uh, I forgot the guy's name, the villain of the whole thing. Mm-hmm. He cuts out of his of his evil Tie Fighter with the uh, dark saber. Now we've talked about the dark saber and and its lore in Star Wars. You can go back and listen, but. And so, of course, people are wondering, you know, are they going to have lightsaber battles? Uh, Moff see... Gideon. Moff Gideon, thank you. Yep. Are they going to have, you know, maybe some lightsaber scenes or battles or whatever? Are we going to have Jedi? Well, um, this is a quote from... Uh, Tell oh, Jane... me like Favreau. Uh I think it's from Esposito, Giancarlo Esposito. Okay. Yeah. This is what he says. He says, the prop guys are wondering about, or wondering about me because I was in a bit of uh, commotion and a bit of a struggle with someone else, which I'm hoping you will enjoy when you see it. Major, major, epic, epic lightsaber action happening on this show. And I should mention that I'm the only character in this first season who was able to be honored with having that lightsaber. So it feels wonderful. Um, And then continuing on, he says, people are wondering if Moff Gideon would face off with a lightsaber wielding Din Djarin or Baby Yoda. Really? No. I think Baby Yoda's going to wield a lightsaber. Gosh, I 
Uh, I hate the internet. Anyway. <laughs> you do have a love-hate with it. I do. Yeah. He says, well, no way. It ain't going to happen, baby. Anything is possible. Baby Yoda. Yeah. <laughs> and you keep watching. Because although the baby has some incredible power without having to wield the dark saber, I think the baby is so curious about what this is. So you will be enthused and inspired when you see the scene I'm referring to in season two, which is to come in October. Keep watching. That was a very political answer. Like you okay. didn't actually answer the question. Right. Just kind of, well. Kind of sidestepped it. Yeah. Wait till you watch the scene and oh, you'll be inspired. And so who actually is like quoted as saying that it'll be like major, major epic, you know? That was him. Gian, that was him. Giancarlo hmm. Esposito. Um, which will, okay, so this actually will be pretty awesome because with the first season, we kind of learned that they've only heard myths and legends and talks around the campfire, you know, of lightsabers oh, and yeah. Jedis yeah, 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 yeah. and these kind of a things, right? And the Force, but they've never really seen it. And to have, like, in the next season, them seeing these lightsabers, um... It's going to blow some of their minds. Yeah. Right? It's like, the, this is true. The legends are true. Um, it'll also be interesting because it takes two to saber. Mm -hmm. um, yes, it does. <laughs> it'll be interesting to see who it takes that... two to saber. I like... It'll be interesting to see who actually um, is that second person. Yeah. Right? It's got to be... It's got to be the Mandalorian, right? I mean... You think so? I mean, why overthink it? It's got to be him. Just, there are just no... Just, like, finds one laying around? I mean, there aren't really any more Jedi at the moment in in that timeline, except for Luke. He's the only one. Right, and they're not going to do anything with Luke Skywalker. I wouldn't think so. No. Um. So, uh, that'll be pretty interesting, because he's not had any type of training whatsoever. He's typically used to using blasters, right? Yeah. Well, he, I think he'd be all right at it because even like his weapon that he's got, he sometimes uses like, that's true. He kind of hits with it. And I mean, parries. I'm sure, I'm sure he's had some sort of weapons training when it comes to, you know, melee weapons and that sort of thing. So will this make him the, um, third person to wield a lightsaber that doesn't have any force abilities or is just like, Right? Yeah. Well, well, because we have we have uh, Grievous, Han right. Solo, mm -hmm. and then Moff Gideon. All oh, right. Okay. So it's already been three. Okay, so four. He'll be the fourth. So probably the fourth. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Unless, oh, I hope they don't go that direction where he's like a Jedi. Yeah, I hope so too. No, that. Yeah. He's a bounty hunter at heart. Yeah. And that's what I like about it. It feels like the wild, wild west. I yeah. hate for him to have to yeah. get, like, all tangled up with lightsabers and the force and... Yeah, I don't want to... I don't want him to go that route. No. Yeah. I mean, they're already pushing it with Baby Yoda, and I'm really sick of that character, by the way. <laughs> yeah? The internet has completely ruined that character. Completely, and now they're coming out with like a ton of merch. Like, yeah, they they've got lot like buckets and buckets and boatloads full coming this direction. Yeah. Oh, it'll be the number one toy. I'm sure of it this Christmas season. Yeah. Now I've seen memes where people have like CGI like different clothes onto him and using those as memes. I'm like, oh, this is so stupid. <laughs> Don't ruin this for me. It's like when you hear like a great song on the radio, but then they play it a billion yeah. times over and over again. Exactly. That you're just like, okay, mm, I'm kind of over. Uh, for instance, the new like the one that like really ru got ruined for me was Radioactive mm. by Imagine Dragons. I liked it, thought it was great, but then like it got played so many yeah. times. Like it was like every other song on the radio. Same thing happened with All Star with Smash Mouth. Oh, yeah. Not only was it being played a hundred times a day on the radio, but it was in every freaking soundtrack to every film for like a year. Thanks a lot, Shrek. Yeah. <sighs> um, Baby Yoda is the all-star of Star Wars. Yeah. Quite, yeah. I mean, you know, 
that fits on many levels. Oh yeah. <laughs> um so from something adorable to something else, new callers um to translate your dog's barks into cuss words. Now this is kind of being sold as a gag gift, but there's a new caller that will allow you to hear what you want to think your dog is saying when it's barking at the doorbell or, you know, at anybody else. It's like a naughty version of up. Right? It's the cuss caller. And it'll, let's see, a speaker on the caller that plays profanity, including the F and bull. They're just like, <laughs> this article is kind of interesting. It'll run, it'll set you back um, $60. It is going to be leather and they do have a steel option as well. But I was thinking about it, and I usually, like, with all of my pets growing up, I've thought about what they would sound like, and I already have, like, this idea in my head what they would sound like. Mm -hmm. So to have a caller with somebody else's voice in it, I I don't think it would – Yeah, I don't think I would like that that much. Yeah, I could see, like, um, this is made for – like college kids and and white trash people that yeah. think it's funny that also have one of those like singing bass things on yeah their, on their wall right yeah they have Billy Bass still up there on their wall I'm like honey it's three in the morning we gotta order this cuss caller <laughs> <laughs> did you ever like imagine what your cats would sound like um Spock. I, th- I would imagine it had like kind of a sophisticated voice, Sean Connery esque. I didn't. I didn't do so much voices for them, but more, I projected what personalities they would have. Yeah, if they were human. Well, if they if they had, you know. Well, they have personalities. Well, yeah, but if they could speak, like what what kind of stuff they would say. Did any of them have accents? No. Okay. <laughs> I never did give any of them that sense. Yeah, I don't... Uh, You're not that crazy of a pet lover? No. No, 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 no. No, I don't call pets fur babies or anything like that. Yeah. I don't call dogs doggos. Like, no, they're... Yeah, just... just yeah. I hate the internet. You're looking forward to having that porch where you can just, like, yell at people, right? <laughs> In a rocker, just gotta, like, sit on the porch. Get out my yard! Like, lawn! Do that now. The internet is basically my porch. Yeah? And I'm yelling at people that pass by. Um. And speaking of... You know, I like to yell at people, some people about this, but... Disney names new CEO. So Bob Iger has stepped down as the CEO of Disney and they have put in this guy. What's his name? Uh, John something. The heck is his name? Uh, Oh, Bob. (laughs) It's not John. It's Bob. Uh, Bob Chappick. Another Bob. Another Bob. Bob Iger, uh, I just looked it up, uh, 69 years old. Yeah. So he's kind of getting, up, getting yeah. up there in age. Uh, see, so this Bob, the new Bob, has led Disney's parks, experiences, and products. And he's now the seventh leader of the Disney company. Uh, Iger said that he felt it was time to make a change. He will remain the executive he was chairman. Talking about his depends. <laughs> he will remain the executive chairman until his current contract ends on December thirty first, twenty twenty one. He also plans to spend more time on Disney's creative work, including Hulu, Disney Plus, and Fox. Okay. the The new Bob or the old the Bob. old Bob. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So the new Bob is kind of they're kind of trading places, right? Because the new Bob was working on, you know, the Disney parks and stuff, and now he's kind of leading the company. Old Bob was leading the company, and now he's going to work on more of the creative side. Okay. Where uh, Disney is headed. Yeah. With some of these other um, products and properties. 
Do you think this uh, this will really have any type of like ramifications long term with the direction mm, of the company, I, or it's already like set in motion? I doubt it. I mean, with how big Disney is, I mean, even if he does enact any sort of change, it's going to take years before we see anything, right? You know, uh, and I can't really see him making huge changes. Well, see, see, Disney is really good about like sweeping up like other properties and other things. Um, but as far as like change, they're they're kind of slow to do that. And here's the other thing: I saw a lot of comments where people were saying, "Oh, well, you know, Bob Iger did so many great things for Disney, and this guy's going to screw it up," and blah blah blah. The CEO, I doubt, has a whole lot of input. Yeah, like it's the CEO's job to put people in place to have that input and to make those decisions the ceo is basically well he's a little bit of a puppet i mean he has a say in who he like brings up with him yeah the ceo is more like looking for long-term big picture stuff the small day-to-day things he has no input in yeah and so you're the Changing the CEO is not going to change the company that much. They would have to like completely wipe out all the executives, all the people on the board, and completely bring in new people to see any sort of dramatic change. Right. Yeah. And they would still play it pretty safe and try to do... Even if that were to happen, they'd play it pretty safe and kind of do what they've already been doing. Mm -hmm. You know? And the fact that this guy has already been working for Disney, you know, it's not like they're bringing out some outside guy. So, he right. already knows the company pretty well. Right. So, it'll be fine. It'll be fine. I'm not, I'm not worried. Um, okay. So, Naughty Dog uh, as has confirmed that there is going to potentially be another upcoming um un- uncharted game this was actually like i'm not that keen to always believe the rumors and things that are like potentially happening because i don't want to get my hopes up especially with something as beloved to me as um the uncharted series yeah but this this comes from it's kind of cool because like before the Last of Us Two comes out, Nolan North and a couple other people got together to play the Last of Us and to um, just kind of like chat and have an interview. And he's actually the one that kind of like hinted or alluded to it. Yeah. So it's got some validity to it for sure. Um, he he would know, right? Um, I, without giving too many spoilers away, uh, I believe that this new installment would probably focus more on um, Nathan Drake's daughter. Yeah. Um, and not so much him anymore. He's kind of like... They they put a nice like bow on the series, um, but uh, there's still some other questions about the series. Uh, well, okay, one of the questions I have, like, that I'd love to ask or get an answer for is it seemed kind of weird to me because like Nathan Drake and his wife, they were like really tentative to say anything to their daughter about like all these different crazy adventures that they've gone on. Yeah. And they're just like, Oh, you know, yeah. Um, dad, like he's, he's done some crazy fun stuff, you know, but then she kind of like, picks up some of his stuff that and play is playing around the office and looking some at uh, some of his other things that he's done. Mm-hmm. And like if that was me, if I was Nathan Drake, I would totally be like, hey, I killed like all these like zombies and I yeah. also like rescued this and I like found these artifacts and oh yeah, I've, I've, that place, I've been there. Yeah, I've scuba dived with sharks, mm-hmm. you know. I, I'd be bragging like up a storm cuz you have so many cool stories, but they were like They've really played it close to the, you know, close to their chest. I could see him going in this direction if they make a new game. I could see Nathan Drake has disappeared. It's maybe 10, 15 years from the last game, so his daughter's grown up now. Tomb Raider age, right? Yeah. Lara Croft? Yeah. He's disappeared, and she has to go on her own adventure to find her, or find him. And... Along the way, you start to 
pick up. He's he's left clues. Yeah, and you start to kind of pick up pieces of you know his life and and other things he's done that we maybe don't know about. Right, and you get some have, other adventure that yeah. he's gone. Maybe you can have flashbacks to him doing other things. And maybe. those flashbacks could be ones that you could actually play because yeah. they did do that in the fourth one. Yeah. You were able to play as young Nathan Drake and mm-hmm. his brother. Um, so yeah, that, that would, okay. Um, my, I don't know. The only thing that like, I would hate to see him being like captured by somebody and him in need of assistance because he's kind of a badass and he could get out of any type of situation. Even if he's older, you know, he'd be like a Liam Neeson kind of a character, right? Sure. He'd still be able to get out of these situations. And I'm not saying that he's necessarily captured, but he's just, he's disappeared. Whether that, yeah, he's just like, he's got that itch for like needing to go on another adventure. So Mm -hmm. she's like trying to like find him. Mm -hmm. Okay. I could see him going in that direction. Only if he has to find some sort of a cure for his wife. That's the reason that he up and like left. Mm. Right? Because then I feel like you would still find him really endearing. Rather than just him being like this dude that's just like, oh, I really, you know, I'm like getting older, but I still want to go on these cool adventures. Like if he had a good reason for it. Or perhaps it was like they went to go find like Sully. Mm. Or do you think that they could, like, tag team him and his daughter could, like, work together and you kind of play as one or the other? Um, yeah. They do, like, a co-op kind of a situation? Could do that. I don't know. Trying to, like, go help out Soli, who's been taking... Because he, he's more likely to be, like, captured. I would think Soli would be maybe dead at that point. <laughs> <laughs> True. Yeah, if you're saying 10 years from the last game... No, he'd be like, okay, he'd be like an elderly dude. He'd be like in his 70s. Oh, that's true. That's true. Yeah, yeah, you're right. Maybe like, the maybe the, it could end with like Sully's death or something. Ooh, that would be heart-wrenching, but a great game. Yeah. Um, If they continued with this and they do go with the direction with the daughter and she actually takes on the mantle and becomes the new, you know, uncharted leader. um. I think it would. I think it would be too close to, um, uh, Tomb Raider. Tomb Raider. Yeah. Well, and I mean, Uncharted was basically kind of an Indiana Jones ripoff, right? So I mean, <laughs> I could, I could see that. I could see that happening. Okay. Maybe bring in some more fans or different fans to the game, and you know, broaden their whole their reach. Yeah. But not do pl- cross platform because it's staying a Sony product. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, oh, I forgot to. That was, by the way, this week in geek. This week in geek. Yes. You know, got to say that so I can put in the little sound effect there. So now let's get to our revs and wrecks. I don't have a sound effect for that yet. I have to make something. Um, so the recommendation that I have for this week, uh, I'll go ahead and give this to you. Yeah. Well, actually, give me just one second. Um, so it's Men of Wrath, and this is written, um, by Jason Aaron and illustrated by Ron Gardner. Um, this basically follows, so back in 1903, um, there was a dispute over land and sheep which kind of set in motion this whole curse that came upon this these fathers and sons mm. of the wraith family so you've got era the the fought well so yeah the, like what kind of happens is son kills father and so on and it's been happening for generation after generation but you've got this um, son, his son, Era's son, he's got terminal cancer, like which they tell you that right off the bat. And he's kind of an assassin. Mm-hmm. So he's taken a job to kill his son, which is kind of like 
going off the norm of what like what normally typically happens. Um, his son is on the lam running with his girlfriend who is pregnant with their, you know, with their son. And it, it's brutal, but it is, it's a fantastic read. Like it's, it, it had me to like turn in the page. I didn't put it down. Like I read the whole, whole entire thing. Oh man, that is brutal. He just killed a baby. Uh, yeah. Yeah, dude. He just like, um, he leads these people like right at the beginning. He leads these people out into this murky swamp kind of a thing. Makes the wife pick up the the guy and drag him out further before he shoots her. Yeah. Because he didn't want to have to get his hands dirty. And then like there's a baby in the car crying. And he just kind of like hucks it in the river. He goes, ah, hell, nearly forgot. Then he says, <laughs> see the car seat fly into the river Jeez. yeah it's not for the it's not for the faint of heart uh they do wow. kind of do it tastefully and it like the illustrations are amazing um but yeah it's pretty brutal there's this other scene between a preacher the son and the father that they're fighting in a church and then it like continues on into a cemetery that's amazing like i i i could totally see this being like a movie for sure um but it's definitely worth a read if you don't mind, like, the darker comics. <laughs> the, the robber's wearing a Wolverine mask. Right. It's oh, funny. Oh, the ro- that's the son. Is it? Yeah, uh, he's trying to get some money for for a reason. I don't want to spoil anything. But, yeah, no, it's... I, that's what's really drawn to, like, I'm drawn to. Um, I love story, but, like... If it's got great artwork, you know, the story could be mediocre, but I would still appreciate it for the artwork. Yeah, the artwork's pretty good. Yeah. Yeah. But this is definitely worth a read out of um, five envelopes of cash. <laughs> I I would probably have to say I'm sitting at... Three and a half, like wow. cl- like close, like b- like borderline four. Okay, mm-hmm. it's it's worth a read. All right, um, yeah, yeah. Just after those first couple of pages, you're just like, wow. Wait, what happens here? Yeah, what happens next? Because like the father, he's just like kind of a badass. He'll take a shot and he'll just kind of keep going and pull the bullet out himself. Mm-hmm. You know? Yeah, he just he's just like one of those older guys that keeps going. Hmm. Okay. Um, well, let's hear something that, that's kind of odd. Apparently, both of us have been rewatching The Office. <laughs> <laughs> right? Yeah, you're like, Independently of each other. You, you'd posted something on Facebook talking about Pam and the seventh season, yeah. which I'm going to ask you about. Okay. But like... Yeah, you were watching it, and I'm just like, "Wow, I've been also watching yeah. it." Like, just kind of like <laughs> if I'm if I'm cooking or eating dinner, yeah. I'll just kind of like throw it on, and yeah, or it's like so washing e- dishes. It's so easy to watch. Oh, it is. Yeah. Um, it was actually um Billie Eilish that she well because I was watching this interview where um she was being quizzed on how well she knows The Office mm, by Rain Wilson. Yes. Yeah, I saw that. Right, and after like watching that, I'm just like. I need to rewatch this yeah. show. It's great. Yeah. Um, it's got so many one-liners that are oh, it does. iconic. And it's become such a part of like our uh, like like an American heritage. You know, like it's become such a part of the zeitgeist yeah. of our culture. Oh, absolutely. It's become so many memes and i mean it's just from jim peering through like you know the windows the blinds the blinds to michael doing any number of things Mm -hmm. michael yelling no and uh dwight with his like um what's the what does he always say where he's just like um fact oh yeah Yeah. yeah, yeah. there's been so many memes about that yeah um the reason I started watching this again is because I was I've been listening to um, the Office Ladies podcast. Okay, 
with Jenna Fisher and Angela Kinsey. And they, they're they going through episode by episode and just kind of breaking down everything, kind of giving behind-the-scenes facts. Well, that's awesome. Yeah, and so originally I just started watching the one episode, just kind of came up with the show. But eventually I was just like, mm. oh, I'll just keep going. <laughs> You're right. I'll watch the next episode, then the next episode. and oh, yeah. It's so easy now to I'm do. Now I'm on season seven. <laughs> right? <laughs> of nine. Yeah. yeah. Which... Okay, once Michael Scott... Okay, so wait, speaking of Pam, you were saying that she's like the most attractive in season seven? Yeah, I think. Why Why is that? Because she's kind of matured? Yeah, because... She's no longer this like cute little office Yeah, girl. she's she she's kind of stepped out of that role where she's kind of that shy, kind of put upon uh, receptionist that's having all these issues with Roy and Jim and everything and you know she went through where she was part of the Michael Scott paper company yeah and now she's a salesman and now you know she's wearing really business attire and her hair is straight instead of like kind of darker as well yeah I think she just I think she just looks really attractive in season seven uh she did kind of take a step back like and they went a different direction with it because it was that whole Jim and Pam thing for many seasons mm-hmm. right yeah and now she's kind of had to take a, on a different role but uh, like you were saying I love how she like doesn't step down you know or back away mm-hmm. from her guns yeah and she's not afraid to like take that leap and yeah. just be like all right I'm going yeah she becomes uh, a much more well-rounded character as the seasons go on. I don't, however, like the direction that they went with, like, the, um, I don't know, it seemed weird to me. Like, not to say that they, you don't see, like, this perfect relationship between the two of them, and then you kind of see them having, like, their struggles and their yeah. issues. Um, but you've already since seen that, and... I don't know, I, I I wasn't too big of a fan of that direction that they went with, the, where she starts... Like, you know, having feelings for the the guy that's actually filming. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was an interesting choice. Yeah, and, and Jim is going off and, like, starting his own company and stuff. And yeah, that, was, that was weird. Right, with Jim, like, doing the whole sports kind of yeah, a stuff. Yeah. Well, okay, he did play basketball in high school and played a couple of times, you know, there. Like, but... you never think of Jim as, like, a sports guy. No. You know, like he's never really he he he's said a couple things about it, but like that's references. Yeah, yeah, but that's it. Like, right? It seemed like an odd choice for it sure. Did. And after Michael Scott leaves, yeah, so does the series. Yeah, in my in my opinion, yeah, I'll, I'll it's gonna, I still it's watch be it. Hard to watch, right? Yeah, because it just changes the whole the whole tone of the sh- of the show shifts and changes once he leaves. Yes. And it's it's amazing how you see how pivotal 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 a character he was that as soon as he's gone, yeah, the entire show is completely different. Right. Yeah. Uh they still manage to kind of gimp on. Yeah, I mean there's a they do have a few good episodes here and there, but uh, but I'm still like my favorite part is when the originals, you know, the OGs are talking. Yeah. Right? You've got Dwight and some of these other characters. Yeah, um, cuz that's another thing that that bugged me about those last two seasons is they kept bringing in guest stars. Yeah. That they had so many guest stars where people were taking you know, become taking over as, as regional manager for a while, or the the CEO of the company of Saber, or yeah, you know, it's just it's and they never really just focused on that core group so much anymore, right? Which, which is weird because it like it seemed like they were testing the waters while they're still going on with the show. Mm-hmm. Like, they didn't have a, like, they're like, well, maybe this will work if we bring in this character. Oh, no, that didn't work. Let's bring in this character. Oh, uh, um, uh, perhaps this, you yeah, know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Which is really odd for a TV show to do. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I don't Usually know. Usually you lock these people in for, like, contracts and... Yeah, and it. It, and it, and it... It always irritated me that Steve Carell left because he said he left to go pursue other things, but like he was already in season seven. Like, how much longer do you think the show was going to go? 
Right. I mean, write it out until the end. I never understood why actors do that. Why they leave, like, in episode or season four or five or six or something. And the show only lasts two or three more seasons. Right. Like, just write it out till the end, you know? Because you're, that's when you're getting, like, the biggest checks. Yeah. Right? Um, you look at a character, like, I mean, I didn't much care for the show. I mean, it was okay. It had its moments. Uh, two and a half men. Mm-hmm. But Charlie Sheen, dude, he was making, like, a million and a half an episode. Yeah. And then leaves, and then they bring in Ashton Kutcher, who's making like making bank off this sh- like off the show for a couple more seasons. But why didn't that character just write it out, or why didn't these? I don't know. Yeah, I I get that you want to pursue other things, and you're kind of done with that character. But but at the same time, you only have probably a couple more years left, and then that's done. Put a bow on that. Go do other things. Yeah, and I gotta say, Steve. Because I know you listen. Uh, his post office career, it, it's had its highlights. For sure. He's had a couple really good roles, but for the most part, it hasn't been all that great. Uh, I hasn't hated been amazing. Marwin. I thought, like, Fo- uh, he did a fantastic job as far as acting goes with um, Foxcatcher. Foxcatcher, yes. He did right. amazing in that role. Um,. He was great in The Big Short, Mm -hmm. Um, Anchorman, not so much, Get Smart, Date Night. Um, I I did like him in Seeking a Friend for the End of the World. I'll have to give this over to you. Oh, yeah. Forgotten that. He's done, like, a ton of movies. Oh, what was the other one where he plays, like, the father? Um, The Way Way Back? No, where he's, like, laying on a bed of pancakes on the cover. Yeah, uh, yeah, Dan in real life. Yes, I I thought that was yeah, a great that one, movie. That one was really good too. I forgot they had. All right, I've actually seen a lot of his stuff. I just realized, <laughs> like I've seen the forty year old version, Crazy Stupid Love, Despicable Me, The Big Short, Anchorman, Evan Almighty, Bruce Almighty. Um, I never saw Welcome to Marwin because people just trashed that. Oh, it was it was stupid. I saw Foxcatcher. I get, get what they're trying to do, but it was weird. Yeah. Dinner for Schmucks, Date Night, Dan in Real Life, Vice, Seeing a Friend for the End of the World, The Incredible Burt Wonderstone. Yeah, I've seen all of these. I didn't, yeah, I didn't realize I'd seen so many of his films. But like you said, like it was kind of it's hit or miss. I would say about Thirty percent are decent movies, like yeah. are, are good movies that I liked. Yeah, 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 yeah. The way way back is really good. That's a really good show. Oh, I even really liked him in Battle of the Sexes. Yeah, I like I like seeing Steve Carell play kind of a jerk because he plays a jerk really well. Oh, he does. Yeah. Uh, Man, there are there are some scenes like going back to the office. That... Oh yeah, that's what we were talking about. <laughs> Not Steve Carell's <laughs> movie career. I, I I really like seeing him as a bad guy or kind of like a like you were saying like a jerk. Yeah, you know, for whatever reason, like from seeing him as a happy go lucky goofy goofball, you know, who had like some really heartwarming moments, um, to seeing him play like that, it it's kind of cool. Mm. Um, but favorite episodes of The Office so far? Um, hmm. Dang, that's, that's really, that's really a tough question. For me, probably the, one of the best episodes of the entire series was The Dinner Party. Oh, yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That is one of the best episodes, not just of that series, but of television (laughs) ever. It is so good. And it's so cringeworthy yeah, as well. It's like, so cringy. When he's just sta- like talking about, yeah, look look at my little plasma TV. And he's standing in front of it. And he's like, sometimes I'll just like watch it for hours and stand here in my corner. Oh, I wasn't allowed to put this. And, yeah. Oh, that whole relationship. Oh, my hell. Uh, <laughs> yeah, Jan. Oh, my God. Okay. And Jan playing that music. 
And like saying that she hadn't even started dinner just yet. Yeah. <laughs> it's such a good episode. And even like uh, Dwight coming in there with his like Tupperware and mm-hmm. his dinner, mm-hmm. like with his babysitter. Yeah. <laughs> like, oh, I've got myself a date. You said I couldn't bring it. You know, I had to have, it was couples only. Yeah. Oh, oh. it's so good. That's a great episode. And it is, it is funny that, you know, now you have all these younger kids that are watching The Office. Oh yeah, who I think think that they discovered it, right? Like, no, I've been I've been watching this show for the last fifteen years. <laughs> yeah, like I watched it when it first came on television. This show is definitely. I don't think it would do the as well as it did. You know, it came out at the perfect time. Yeah, where people weren't so PC because there are a lot of like. Uh, like the, even gay references, the gay witch hunt, the gay yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. When Oscar <laughs> comes out, yeah. Um, and even like uh, what was it? What's his name? Um, in the corner in accounting. Um, not Oscar, not uh, not Angela. Kevin, Kevin, thank you. Where Kevin's just like, oh, you haven't heard about prison, Oscar? Oh, you would love, <laughs> you would love prison. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Uh, some of these episodes, I'm like, I laugh, like it's fu- like it's funny what they say, but I'm just like, ooh, that wouldn't work yeah, well just, today. Ugh. I do that a lot when I'm watching. I'm just like, ooh, ooh, ooh. yeah. Uh, it's, nine times out of ten, it's Michael Scott though. Oh yeah, like yep, say yep, like yep. going too far, you know, with his other like even uh I lo- like Prison Mike though. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. He's one of my favorite characters. He's so dang funny. <laughs> I push you up against that wall, biatch. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, he's talking about like you know the, uh, the Dementors. What was the hardest part about prison? The Dementors. The Dementors. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Suck out your soul and Hoyt. <laughs> Dementors like Harry Potter? No, not like Harry Potter. <laughs> Some of those intros are some of my favorites, though. So that's probably the thing that I love the most about The Office. Are those little intros before they even go into? Oh it. yeah, 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 yeah. Um, Jim, some of his things that he does, where he puts everything like Dwight's stuff in Jello, mm-hmm. or when he like that cable that he just found for like twenty bucks, and it just like goes throughout the whole entire thing. And yeah, he thinks that he's like, yeah. wait, where did this red cable come on my t- on my on my phone? Yeah. You know? uh, yeah. Some of the pranks he came came up with are genius, but I gotta say. Watching it again, um, I kind of agree with Dwight on his – his the way he views Jim and not liking him. Like, I He's get like, oh, that. Jim? Like, the new boss doesn't find him as a yeah. funny, like, happy-go-lucky yeah. person? Because Jim is a slacker. He is. And yet he's constantly getting promoted, whereas Dwight is constantly the top salesman in the company. He's, he's constantly, his butt off. yeah, he's working really hard. He's not only like works there, but he also works of puts in a full day's work at his beet farm. Yeah, right, and his B and B. Yeah, he's one of the hardest working people there, and yet Jim's always getting promoted over him. So I, I totally get it. Like yeah. I've worked with people like that. Yeah. Like, what the hell? Like, does nobody see, like, my... I mean, it, Dwight does get, like, honored in a couple of ca- occasions. He does. He does. And I love that scene where he goes in and he's, like, talking and basically, like, takes all of these speeches from... Oh, from uh, famous dictators? dictators. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he's constantly pounding the podium. <laughs> and oh, that's like, funny. cheering and yeah. looking it's the greatest thing. <laughs> he's, like, he's got... He's captured the people. Yeah. No. Um... Yeah, but... Is Dwight probably your favorite character? I was just... No. For a long time, Jim was, until this most recent watch. But I gotta gotta say Michael is probably my favorite character. Yeah. Yeah. Because he can be such a a goofball, and he can be so naive and innocent and, and... with stuff, but I like seeing the little moments, those glimpses where you can actually see that he's a good salesman and yeah. he's a good manager. If he just would put all that other stuff aside, like he'd be really good. And I like seeing those little moments. Oh, me too. Especially when he's like saying, Hey, 
you know, these other companies, like, he called up somebody else when uh, him and Jim went out on, like, a, um, to go talk to one of their customers. Yeah. And they had him, like, they they worked perfectly together because Jim was calling up um, one of the people in their office. And then they'd also called one of these big chain companies. Oh, that was, he, yeah, that was him and Dwight. Was that him and Yeah. Dwight? No, no, but Michael had done it as well. Did he? Yeah. Um, oh, because I just remember right. the one scene with just him and because uh, Dwight was calling. Um, it was like office. It was supposed to be like Office Depot or something. And then Jim called up Dunder Mifflin and got Kelly. <clears throat> got Kelly yeah. and you know. Yeah. No, I I could have sworn that I know Michael's gone on a couple of those ones. He has. Well, yeah, yeah, he definitely has. Where he's just talking of oh, especially where Michael's like highlighted, you know, green means this, no, yeah. red means this, you know. <laughs> Basically all of them mean just don't bring up that thing to the <laughs> Don't people. talk about it. Yeah. And Dwight's just like, "How is your, you know, your gay stuff, yeah. you know? Like how is he doing?" Like Yeah. Yeah, mark that green, which means go ahead and not talk about it. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, Michael, man, he, yeah, he is great. I also, I, I love his management style sometimes mm-hmm. as well. Like, it, it's so great when he just like, all right, we're going to stop what we're doing and come into the conference, like, not in five minutes, like five seconds, get yeah. in the conference room, you know? Yeah, I, it's hard to pick a favorite between, like, that core group. Um, Who, who'd you put in that core group? So, obviously, Michael, Jim, Pam. Uh, Dwight, Dwight, Oscar, Oscar, Angela, Kevin. Mm, yeah, Creed a little bit, Meredith a little bit, but it's really like those guys. And yeah. then once Andy comes in, right, and which he is weird. Like it. he did a fantastic job with like stepping up to well, the, I guess, like, the plate I guess, with these others. I guess Phyllis and Stanley too. Yeah, yeah. yeah I, I do like those two as well, but like they kind of like take a back seat and just kind of have their moments. They do. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, Phyllis actually started to annoy me after a while. Like really? she, Yeah, there's something about her that just irritates me. <laughs> yeah. Especially when she's like starts dating Bob. And mm-hmm. Bob, you know, Bob, Bob Vance, Vance, Vance Refrigeration. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, um, what about, uh, what's the dude in the warehouse? Daryl. Daryl, thank you. Yeah. I like Daryl. Right? No, he kind of, like, uh, stepped up as well. He did. Right? But it was weird because it wasn't until, like, the, the sixth season. Yeah. I think that's because he was becoming more popular. Of a fan favorite? Yeah. Like, he, he had made a few movies and stuff, so he was becoming more, a bit more famous. So, we're like, let's bring hey, him let's, in more. Let's use him. Yeah. Yeah. But I, I appreciate Daryl because I've worked in so many warehouses. Mm-hmm. So, it's like, I... I get where he's coming from. I get where he's coming from. Especially when, oh man, especially when Michael goes down there and starts like uh, trying to operate the forklift and trying to give these safety yeah. lessons and I'm like, just don't touch that stuff, dude. Like, no, you no, no. Yeah. Get off the forklift. Don't touch the baler. Yeah. So if our conversation about The Office hasn't sparked your interest with either watching it for the first time or watching it again, you know, go and do that because I think it will be leaving Netflix here soon. Is it? Yeah. Oh, that's going to piss a lot of people off. Right? Yeah. They're that's actually going to have to go out and buy like the DVDs now or the Blu-rays, heaven forbid. Oh, I'm sure like somebody like Hulu would be quick to uh, scoop that up. Yeah. Yeah. All right. <clears throat> so, um, you can find all of our episodes at worldwarg.podbean.com. We're also on iTunes, Google Play, CosmicPotatoNetwork.com, wherever fine podcasts are sold or downloaded or whatever. Yeah. We're out there. Just look for us. Uh, on the social media, Facebook.com slash Podcast. We're also on Twitter and Instagram at WWGPodcast. Uh, you can also find all of our merchandise at shop.spreadshirt.com slash worldwarg. You can also email us anytime. Day or night. At worldwgpodcast at gmail.com. You can also call or text the show at any time on our listener line 
at 385-240-1692. Call us about anything. We yeah. don't care. Um, One last thing I would like to say is we will be starting March Movie Madness in April. Oh, yeah. Right? That's right. It is March. The first day, in fact. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, look forward to that. And this year, unlike last year, we didn't really have, like, any prizes or anything. This year we'll have prizes because this year I have money. Oh, yeah. How about that? So, yeah, look forward to that. Uh, So, this has been World War G episode 258. That has been AJ. That has been Troy. Stay geeky, my friends. I was trying to think of an office phrase to say. Oh, well.